Welcome back to another episode of Void City Customization. I am Dan, and today we are going to be looking at how you can put together a custom McFarlane Toys Mr. Freeze action figure to go along with the rest of your DC Multiverse action figures. Here's kind of a quick close-up of him. Kind of spin him around real quick, just to kind of show you guys some of the details on his suit, on his backpack there. I will right, set him up there. And what we're going to do now is take a look at what figures you will need to make this particular figure, or at the very least which figures I use to make this figure. You can use less or more or whichever ones you want, but today we're just going to look at some of the steps I took to put this guy together. This is a little bit of a kit bash, but there is a lot of customization that went into this and a lot of experimental techniques that I hadn't done before and some that I probably won't do again and others that I will probably continue to use because they worked out rather well. Anyways, let's jump right in, start showing you guys some of the figures you will need. Well, as you could probably tell looking at this guy, a large part of the base of him, or at least the, the most pieces used here, are actually from another McFarlane Toys figure. This is a Warhammer 40k Hellblaster artist proof figure. And as you can see, it's got the same body pretty much, the same backpack on there with some extra pieces, big blaster, which I also kept from Mr. Freeze here. We will get to that later on. Anyways, let's take a look at this. I really liked this guy for the large armored body that he had. And originally I was going to use his legs as well for Mr. Freeze, just because I didn't really have a better option. However, I didn't really want to go that humongous on this build. I didn't want him to be that tank-like, I guess you could say. I thought that was just a little bit too much, and some of my favorite versions of Mr. Freeze are like, you know, the animated series, which is pretty much where this modern version of Mr. Freeze came from in the in DC Comics even. I mean, most everything pulled from the version of him that existed in the show, in particular his origin episode, The Heart of Ice. And that's a lot of where his look comes from now, and it's a lot of where his origin comes from, all that fun stuff. But I kind of liked how on the cartoons he sort of had that slimmed down look once he got to his waist and went down towards his feet. But he'd always have like the larger refrigerated armored bodysuit to keep him cold because he has to stay in sub-zero temperatures to survive because his body is kind of the reverse of ours. He needs to be cold to live whereas we need to be warm. I always pictured using, at the very least, the torso for this figure, um, not only because of the big armored look to it, but also because of this ring around the helmet. I really like that, and I figured once I found a dome that was appropriate, that would fit right in there. And luckily I actually did. We'll get to that a little bit later. First steps I needed to do were obviously take the parts that I wanted and get rid of the parts that I didn't. So. One thing I did was to remove these shoulder pads, and that's really easy. Um, you just get this guy warm so he's pliable and these pop right off. And they're actually held on by little barbells on the inside, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. This probably isn't the exact one, but they were very similar to this, just a little barbell, and they just plugged right into this. This is one of the removed shoulder pads from him. So you would take that and that just plugs into one side and the other one plugs right into the hole in his shoulder. So that was the first thing I did was I took those out of there. And I've got a whole bunch of pictures of this process so I'm sure I'll throw some of those up so you guys can see how this looks because obviously now he is well past the point of showing you that on him. Anyway, those things came off. I also heated up the chest and the torso here after I took the head off and everything and this eagle winged skull on the front here is actually a separate piece and that's just glued right into there. So I had just a miniature screwdriver and I kind of snuck that underneath the edge and I also got lucky because once it was heated up the top edges of the wings you could kind of squeeze the suit when it was pliable and the wing would stick up it wasn't glued all the way to the edge so I kind of just pried from the edge and just worked that off of there and every time it would start to get cooled off and the plastic would not be pliable anymore you would just dip that in the water again for another 30 seconds or a minute till it's pliable once again and then you can just continue prying that off because then the water can also reach more of the glue and help to break that up. So that eagle comes right out of there 
and that's actually really cool too. I kept that. That's right here, and that's that's actually a really nice little prop. I imagine that could be used maybe to make some sort of a different figure. I actually had ideas of possibly trying to make some sort of a Judge Dread maybe, because when you heat this up, you can actually bend it around and it'll then hold sort of that shape, so I figure that can maybe go on a shoulder or something of a normal size figure and make some kind of figure like that. I don't know, that might be kind of cool, but it's a nice piece, so I kept that around. You can kind of see where it plugged into the chest right there. There's the leftover glue residue on the back. Here is the head popped off as well. See where his peg was plugged in there. That just comes right off, I kept that also, obviously. So now what I had left was the backpack the torso minus the shoulder pads, the head, and the eagle. I removed the bottom half of him, so from the belt down, I just had nothing there. And I replaced his legs, obviously. We'll get to which legs I used. I did keep this belt, however. I carved off these two plates that are on the sides here of the belt. I used an X-Acto blade and cut those off, so I kept his belt, and his belt is actually right on there. I've repainted it a little bit, but we will get to how I did that process as well because there's a little bit of a size difference between the waists of these two characters, so we will come back to that. Anyways, that's about everything from him. There are some early versions of this figure. I might throw some photos up where I show he had these legs, and then briefly I had entertained using the legs from Superman Unchained and repainting those, but just the finish that's on them already made it seem like it would probably be a challenge to paint those. And again, I just didn't really like the look of them or the size. I thought they didn't quite match up what I was going for. So I decided to go with the legs from Shriek once I got Shriek. And that was just a straight up leg swap there. Everything from here down on Shriek is actually on Mr. Freeze. So that was just a straight up switch and that was really easy. He, I did the same thing, dip him in the hot water, pull him apart, and they have the same connection points in the waist to just a, a ball and a socket and you just plug him right back in and he went right in there. So that worked out well and I think he fit together pretty well and it gives him the look that I wanted where he's got kind of the more normal sized bottom half of his body and then the large refrigeration suit on the top half because in my mind I always liked kind of the, the Arkham video game version of Mr. Freeze and some of those versions where he's got the bigger suit that almost looks kind of like an old-fashioned diving suit. I just figure if you're gonna be cobbling together some kind of a suit meant to do something that no one's really ever needed a suit to do for someone before. It's probably not going to look pretty. It's not going to be form-fitting. It's not going to be small and compact. I mean, the guy has to walk around with a refrigerator on his whole body all the time. So you got to imagine there's got to be a humongous like compressor on there or something. There's got to be some sort of power source. He's going to need all that stuff, which is why he's always got this big backpack. But then he's also got a giant suit to keep that cool circulating around him. So, big suit. There you go. I think it works great. We'll come back to Shriek in a little bit. So, I don't have another one of these figures, but the next piece, obviously, that was pretty important was, and this is actually kind of where the inspiration to start this figure came from, was the Bloodshot action figure that is modeled after Vin Diesel. This is also a McFarlane Toys figure. I've used pieces of him before in other customs that I've done in past videos, such as the Red Hood custom I did. Well, I mentioned in that video I used his head for something else. Here's what I used it for. As you can see, he's still right in there. Mr. Vin Diesel himself, still completely articulated and poseable inside of there. So that worked out really well, and that's where I got the whole idea from this. Like I mentioned, he's already painted like Mr. Freeze. He's got the, the pale head that looks like he's frozen and got hypothermia, and Considering he's usually got goggles on, I didn't even have to do anything about his eyes, but I don't mind his eyes being red because I imagine freezing your eyeballs would probably explode every blood vessel in them, and they probably wouldn't look too pretty. So, yeah, there you go. Anyways, the goggles. So, there's those guys. Little goggles right there with the red lenses, which is a very nice touch because that's always how I picture Mr. Freeze with the red lenses for whatever reason. That's another animated series throwback. I just always loved that. I thought it made him super creepy. I really liked it. And they fit perfectly on his head as well, which is another 
plus like these literally they fit like they were meant to go on his head and part of me feels like maybe they were because if you trimmed them just a little bit you could make a really good Riddick figure out of this whole setup as well. That might be another one coming eventually someday. I'm thinking about making one. We shall see if I can still find some cheap bloodshot action figures laying around. Anyways, so these are the goggles that come with Polka Dot Man that you can see right here from the new The Suicide Squad movie. His goggles right there, they come off as you can see and they are originally this brown color. So what I did there and I will show photos of this as well to show kind of the process to you guys. Anyway, what I did there was I popped the lenses out because the lenses are a separate little piece that's actually a harder plastic, but be very careful, it's very small, and there's a tiny little piece connecting the two lenses in the middle underneath the plastic there, underneath the bridge. So, to be very careful when you pop those out of there that you don't bust that part because you do want to keep that for when you glue those back in there. Then I use this stuff that I use all the time, this Duke the Color Vinyl and Fabric spray this again is for primarily it's the use for it is supposed to be for repairing like your car seats in your car if you got like some vinyl car seats and there's a little rip or something or a stain or whatever or abrasion you can patch that spray this over it or respray the whole seat and it's a flexible spray so once that's on there it's not going to flake or peel the second you sit in the chair and it kind of squishes or changes shape it moves with the surface that is sprayed on which is why I'm always using this stuff. It's perfect for all of the McFarlane Toys character pieces or any other action figure in general that has like a vinyl or soft plastic coat or jacket or cape in particular. A lot of times the waist pieces on these figures are made out of that. Sometimes the pants pieces are. A lot of times the torsos are depending on which McFarlane Toys setup there is because there's two main setups. There's the one with like the Tinker Toys, Futurama, Bender, X-Ray, going on inside of there and then there's the ones like these figures that are like ball and sockets that are just three parts that ball and socket together but this paint works extremely well so i sprayed the goggles i glued the lens right back in there and plugged it right back in and they work perfect they make him look in my opinion just like mr freeze and like I said, you can take them on or off so you don't have to be permanently affixed, depending on which look you want. And I think they work rather, rather well. Now, one thing I did around the neck here, as you can see, there's this extra piece around the back. I put this in there as a way to help support the dome that goes over his head, the glass dome. Yes, it is actually glass. It is not plastic. This is a glass dome. We will get to that. This was one of those techniques I mentioned to from the beginning that I don't think I'll be doing again. But I wanted a way to kind of secure it more, but also build up the back of this neck, make it look a, a bit fancier. So that is actually, again, the other shoulder. That's why I only have this one shoulder armor pad. What I did for that, as you can see here, it has the little divots in there. Let's kind of match up there, the divots on the sides in here. So what I did was I just cut around this bottom edge here and took that bottom edge and that's what that is. It pretty much fits in that perfect shape right around there. So I just used my Gorilla Glue. It's the same glue I show you all the time. It's the little Gorilla Glue nozzle bottle that also has a brush. So I brush that right on there, affix that on there. That stays on there just fine. Let's get to this dome really quick that goes over his head. So as I mentioned, this is actually a glass dome. The bottom edge I have rubberized with several layers of fabric paint and then another layer of the vinyl paint. I just dipped it in there to go around this bottom edge so I could cover up the sharp edge where I got this from. So for the longest time, I was trying to find a dome to put on Mr. Freeze's head here. I kept buying old, cheap Mr. Freeze figures, hoping one would have the correct scale dome on there. They were all way too small or way too big. I bought those little capsule toy machine balls that you get at the store. You put a quarter in the machine, you turn the crank, and a little capsule comes out. I ordered several different sizes of those, hoping one of those would go over there. And what would happen is they would either be too small, too big, or not transparent, 
like they'd have like a, a frosted look to them so you couldn't see through them at all so that wasn't an option either plus they have that big divot in the top always where they break off of the mold and that's eh, I didn't really want to have that big divot on top of there either so that's why this guy sat on the shelf for a very long time and I didn't really think about him was because until I could find a dome for his head it didn't really seem like there was a point to make Mr. Freeze well Lo and behold, I'm at the store one day, and I see on the shelf this package of these little, uh, what are these things even? They're like bath salts or something, or something for a bath. They're like a bubble bath or something you mix in the bath, and these little containers, and there was a set of four of them. They kind of came together like this. They're each on this little plastic part in the middle, and they screw in on each side. So like this is the cap, and then when they open up out of there, there's like a threaded end on there almost like it's a little jar but the bottom end is you know clear and doesn't have that divot and it's rounded and the nice thing again is that these are glass I mean that's what I was really hoping for was to find some sort of way to use glass for this because I knew it would be the best for seeing through it and it would just look great I thought that no one else is gonna have this problem is from here down into there You've got that threaded ending and it bottlenecks down into there so you can't fit it onto the figure and it's just way too tall. I mean, that would be huge. He'd be a cone head. So that's where I had to get a little bit creative with these things. And that's where I had to get the Dremel out. So this is the point in the video where we're gonna start using some power tools. So as you can see here, there is a difference in size. So what I did was I kind of put this jar down on the table I had a marker and I lined up the marker basically on the side here and I just spun this around so I got a line all the way around where I want it to be. Then I had the Dremel and the Dremel has an attachment where I can kind of put it on the table and vice grip it on there and have the Dremel set up so that it stays at a particular height. And then all I did was kind of just do the same thing again. I kind of held it up so it's flat to the table, up to the Dremel, lined it up with one of the cutter wheels that I had, a grinding wheel with it. And I just very carefully started to spin it around the grinder wheel along the line that I had traced. And I just kept doing that and doing that and doing it until there was like a line ground in, and etched into the surface. And I just kept going very carefully, very lightly, because I didn't want to go too hard, shatter this thing, make it break over, get glass all over. Wear your safety glasses, because there was tons of little sparks and little glass dust flying everywhere. Eye protection, very good. Safety first. Well, anyways, that got done. And eventually, I just kind of, once it seemed like it was cut through enough, I got brave and I took a tiny little hammer and I just kind of dinged it on the side until it popped off. And I ended up with this. However, as you can see, it's not quite flat all around. There were a couple little jagged parts where I had to use some sandpaper. I got some really heavy grit sandpaper, really heavy duty stuff, and I would just have to do this and go around on the sandpaper like that. And it's still not quite flat, but it was ground down to where it wasn't super sharp. However, in the process of cutting it, I did crack it. So there is a crack that goes up the back of this. I was very disappointed. However, it took me like two days to get this done down to this shape right here. So I left it. All I do is I make sure I line this up in the back. I did put some Gorilla Glue on the inside of it and a little bit also on the outside just to kind of hold together that area make sure that crack doesn't go up any higher and that's also part of why I sealed it along the bottom. It has been fine ever since and that's why that goes in the back where you can't even see it and it's like the perfect fit to go right there around his neck. So as you can see it like fits right in there. It's, it's literally perfect to fit that circle. His head fits in there. We can still take this off so you can move his head around do all that stuff. That's why I wanted this dome to be removable still so I didn't want to have it permanent on there. So that stays there. The only thing is if you do do something like this just be really careful that you're careful with your figure because it does come right off then because it is glass so it is heavier than plastic so you don't want that falling on the floor shattering. Like I said that's the one thing you want to be careful of. This is going to be on my shelf so I feel fine and safe with that. What is next? So let's take his backpack off here start showing you some of the chest details. So on his chest, and I will show you some photos of this as well to show you kind of the, the process and how long this took. One thing I did here was I needed to fill in where the eagle used to be. It's a 
do that, I had a Dune action figure, one of those figures I've mentioned in other customizing videos, and I've used other parts elsewhere, you'll see them again also. This is a vest from one of these smaller figures, but there are the two bigger ones, and I used one of those bigger vests, and I actually just cut out this shape right here, almost a shape like a mushroom, kind of. So I cut that out with a little bit going up either side, and I just basically matched it up with the shape in the chest here. And once it kind of lined up and how I wanted it, I Gorilla Glued that right inside of there. And that was his new chest, so it took care of that big empty divot that was in there from the eagle, and filled that out. So that's what it did, right there. This middle piece right here, this is where I kind of got creative. So the silver part, the circle around, the blue in the center, that is actually the butterfly piece that goes inside the armpits of the McFarlane figure. Now I've got tons of extra McFarlane pieces because I've taken a bunch of them apart to make customs, so I have a bunch of these lying around. I imagine if you don't, you could probably find something else to use for this, I'm not really sure what, but this just happened to fit perfectly how I wanted. I had a gray one, probably from a Dune figure, I don't know. And so what I did was I put it on the chest and I traced a circle around it with a sharpie and I used my X-Acto blade to kind of cut out that part in the middle and this is the softer plastic so this is the stuff I would paint with that spray I showed you earlier but and that's only if I had to paint the whole thing but I used it, the blade to cut that circle out and I was able to pry the circle out of the center there and then I actually used a power drill to drill a hole down through his chest just to get to the interior of the figure just so there'd be a hole all the way through. That is because someday I intend to add electronic lighting to this figure. I don't have any yet, but I recently found out how I could do so, and once I get the parts and I've done some experimentation, we might get a part two to this video where you will see some lights coming out of all these different blue areas on his suit and also up through the bottom of his neck piece to underlight his face and hopefully light up the goggles and make them glow red also. That is what the goal is. I know how to do it. I just need the parts and I need to take the time to learn it and then make it happen. So we'll see. Stay tuned for that part two someday down the line. Anyway, so then I glued in the butterfly piece right there and these blue pieces that you see all over. Well, not, not the one from the belt, don't worry about that one yet, but the blue pieces here and here. The ones you see here, you're in his shoulders, and then the one that is in his backpack as well. All of those pieces also came from Shriek. So I had a Shriek figure. The original Shriek figure that I had, this is all that is left of that poor guy because all the rest of his pieces are all over here or elsewhere he's got all these blue orbs on his suit on his gloves there's a little tiny one on his back there's one two three four five six because these are both two different ones there's a big one on the outside and a smaller one on the inside the cool thing about these is you just dip his hands in some hot water and you just push and these pop right out. They're not even glued in. The one on the chest is not glued in either. The only thing that's holding it in place is the white armor plate over his chest. So once you boil him and peel that off of there, that one pops right out. Same for this little guy in his back. Once you lift that up, that pops just right out. So pop those all out. Another thing I did was I then cut out this very small ring, this gray ring, around the blue orb. I cut that out as well. So I had that. And what I did with that was I wanted him to not be totally symmetrical. I wanted to kind of break it up a little bit. So I added this other orb right here. And I did the same thing where I drilled a hole through the chest cavity just so that if I do light him up, the light will come through from the inside to come out of this blue orb. Same as that one. The only things that won't really light up probably are his shoulders. That's that, and I glued that back down in there. Glued on that orb right there. So now he's kind of got this non-symmetrical look. I did touch up the paint a little bit around the edges of this just to kind of match it with the front, add a little bit of silver on there, make it so it looks kind of like metal, like the rest of his suit. Same with this part, there is a little bit of silver paint that I added to that along with I painted this ring silver. So 
that is all paint I added afterwards. And then the other orbs from his hands, these smaller ones, those, these are the big ones here, the one in his chest and the one in his backpack are the two big orbs from the outsides of his hands and the one from the insides of his palms are in his shoulders, right there. So that is where originally those shoulder pads plugged in with the barbells. I had the hole that was right there. What I did was I found a drill bit that was, I basically just lined up the drill bit with the back side of the orbs. So I found with the same width and just drilled straight in there. And basically the drill bit just centered right where the plug went into drilled out that hole so it was the right size and then just popped those guys, glued them in with the Gorilla Glue, did that on both sides. The shoulder pads over the top of that also come from Shriek. Those are his shoulder pads removed and all I did was I cut off two of these smaller pieces from the bottom side so it's just the top layer and then the one bottom plate underneath that so it's not those bottom two plates. And then I just kind of glued those right in on the top of the shoulders to bring those out and make them kind of give them more of a nice silhouette there. So that's where that is. And this piece right here, this white piece, is actually glued to the underside of this top part. So I removed the abdomen so I could get into the inside of the torso. That's just this small under piece of Shriek's armor right there. I cut that off and then glued that up inside there. Trimmed it to the size I wanted. and. There you have it. Same thing with these pieces on the sides of Mr. Freeze's legs right there. Those again are just more pieces of Shriek's armor. I was just trying to use every piece I could, nothing goes to waste. So those are just these little pieces that were on the sides right there that when I cut those off for this piece, I kept them and just put them on the legs to give them kind of an accent there. Just give his outfit a little more color breakup. Yeah, there you go. So that's kind of where we're at so far as far as the pieces used and it was the same process too for this backpack. I just drilled out that hole right there in the center. I marked it with a pen where I wanted the hole to be. I made a little starter hole with just the tip of an X-Acto blade and then I lined up the drill and drilled that portion out. This backpack is hollow on the inside so be careful if you're going to be drilling out holes in there. I also drill a hole in the side here that we will get to later. That is for the attachment for his ice gun. And then I also cut off of the original backpack. So the original backpack is humongous. It's like a jetpack actually. So it's got these two jetpack orbs on the sides. Well, I just cut those guys right off. So they normally just go right there and I just straight cut right along that line, chop those right off of there. So that's why those are gone. And that's where I plug these hoses into. I also did a little bit of paint on here. As you can see, I had some silver paint to the, the vents on the bottom to figure his refrigeration suit. That's why I left those on. I figured he'd still need exhaust. I mean, fridges have vents on the bottom. You need that. And there's a the vent there. I added some chrome to that, some of these bolts. I made silver. I'm probably going to do some more things on there. I got some new colors. I'm going to try. I haven't really done much to his gun yet either, other than some silver. So. I did buy some more colors, like I said, I'm going to try to make that a little more fun. The hoses, let's get to where those came from. So as I mentioned earlier, in my quest to find a dome to go on the top of Mr. Freeze's head here, I was trying to find an older figure where maybe I could just take that dome and use it for him, and maybe even a backpack or a gun possibly. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the Warhammer one yet. Well, that didn't end up working out so well because, like I said, they were all too small, but one of the figures was still pretty cool, so I kept them on my shelf. And that is this guy right here. So this, I believe, if I found correctly, is from 2003. Correct me if I'm wrong. When I found online, it looked like he was from 2003. I just got this guy on eBay for like a few dollars. And he comes with this big backpack with the hose that goes to this cannon. So it's 2003 Mattel DC Universe or DC Heroes Ice Cannon Mr. Freeze. That's what this figure is. So he's got this backpack. You can open it up, fill it up with water. There's a button on the back you can push and then this is basically a squirt gun. So he shoots water out of there. So I left that hose intact because that's pretty cool. 
He also has two other hoses that used to stick out of here. They came out of the back right here where these two hoses are and went around either side of him. These are really long black hoses. They weren't hollow, they were full solid plastic and they plugged into his wrists on either side. Well, I've been looking for hoses to use for my Mr. Freeze and I couldn't really find anything. Nothing just worked at all for me. Uh, eventually I settled on some tubing that you would usually use for an air pump for a fish aquarium. And even that was just huge. It was way too thick. I didn't like it. It wouldn't hold its shape. It, it just didn't work very well. And what ended up happening was when I found that figure, I just looked back to it on the shelf, remembered it was there, and looked at the tubes and thought, hey, he doesn't need those two on the sides. So I chopped them right off, and I glued them right into the holes I put in there so they would stay in place. So those are glued in right up there on the sides, and they come down around. And what I did was I put these two eye hooks right here into his back. Those are just little wall hanging wall hooks I had in this little kit. Here is basically a picture hanging kit. It's got all kinds of stuff inside. There's like little hangers and stuff like that. But in that kit, there's those little eye hooks and I've used those in another figure as well. So I remember I had those. I put those in his back and I use those as guides for keeping the hoses where I want. So now the hoses sit where I want them to sit and I think it ends up looking great. And as I already showed you, they plug right into the chest so you can actually take this off to like recharge your suit or what have you or if you just want to hose them without it or whatever. Same here. I just used my drill, drilled out the hole on either side and then all you have to do is just plug his backpack in right like that and then each hose just goes through those eye rings right there and those come over his shoulder and they just plug right into the chest and you can just line it up and there you go so again it's right over the shoulder plugs right into his chest and just pull back on that Get rid of the slack, line it up, and there you go. It kind of gives them a symmetrical look on the back, keeps the poses down out of the way, keeps them plugged into the front of his suit, and there you go. There's Mr. Freeze. The only other thing I did, like I mentioned, was this belt. This is the belt from that Warhammer figure. I did cut the panels off the sides, like I mentioned. Let me show you the original here. So, on the back of this belt, there are a bunch of things. There is this plate right here. I cut that off as well. I kept these two pouches though, so I cut around those. I kept those. Those are still on there. And I'll show you in the photographs why. So as you can see, I still have those on there. And what I did was I actually had to trim this out and I'll show you the photos of it. I kind of created an interlocking latching system for when I glued it together to help strengthen where this would be connected again just so I could tighten this a little bit and cinch it around the waist for Shriek's waist, which is thinner than the Warhammer waist. But I did want to keep that belt, so that belt is on there again. It is altered to fit him. And then for the tip of that belt there, there is some paint. I did paint the, the belt a little bit silver on there and some gunmetal gray. And the, the tip of it, that blue orb that's not from Shriek, that's actually from the tip of a lightsaber toy I had from an old Star Wars toy. So I just trimmed that off of there. And again, drilled out the hole, plugged that in there, glued it in. And it's not quite the same blue color, but I don't mind because eventually, like I said, I'm hoping that these will have lights in them and then that will change them anyway. Now, as I mentioned earlier, he also has his ice cannon and that is something that you can attach or detach from his power generating backpack here. As I mentioned, I haven't done much in the way of paint as far as customizing this guy. I did a little bit of silver detail on the grate there, but other than that, really not a whole lot. It's basically just like it was. The only other things I have done to alter this are, I did drill out the hole right here where he would shoot the ice out of because I do have a piece I am making. I still have to finish this part. It's the rest of that lightsaber I was mentioning. It's a blue piece of plastic. It sticks right in there, and what I'm gonna use is hot glue to build up onto it what looks like icicles to the point where the end of it would be so large that it would act as basically a stand for it. And then he could hold this out and be blasting an ice blast out of the gun that's removable if you want. So that's the point of that. 
And then I also took that last little blue piece from Shriek. That's the one that is in his back right there, that little itty bitty guy. And drilled another hole in the gun and glued that right in the bottom there. So it does add this kind of little blue, de blue detail to the gun that matches the rest of his suit. And I also drilled this hole in the back there. Now this is for some of that tubing I was talking about earlier, the aquarium tubing. This is the only place where I kept it because I did sort of want a thicker cable for this aspect given that the gun would probably be using a lot of juice. So for that, I've got this little piece of aquarium cable here. I have a McFarlane, I can't remember if this was a wrist or an ankle, it could be a wrist for a really big figure or it could be an ankle for a medium figure. Might be one of Nightwings, I don't know. That just plugs right into the end of this tube, and actually it's not glued or anything, it's just plugged right in there and it holds right on. In the center I have two pieces of wire that I wound around each other to kind of just look like, I don't know, something inside there. But it also acts as a way to make this articulated so you can now pose this cable how you want. So depending on how he's holding the gun, you can move this around and have it not be sticking around and be weird looking. So this end right here, plugs right into the back of his cannon like that. And this other end, that's part of why I did that on this ankle joint, plugs right into that hole I showed you that I drilled out earlier on the backpack. And because of it being on that sort of a, an articulated joint, you can make that aim downwards like that as well. Whereas if you just stuck the tube straight into there, it's like straight out and it would look strange and weird. Then you just put that in his hand, have a hold it however you want, and you can bend this however you want and move that around. So that's cool right there. And that's his ice cannon. Like I said, not too much work done on that yet, but we'll get to that eventually. Mainly I just wanted to have a nice looking Mr. Freeze on my shelf. It's kind of one that I'm very surprised at this point that McFarlane Toys has not made or even announced yet. However, now that we have figures like Blight, which have a dome over their head, maybe that'll get him to make a Mr. Freeze himself coming up soon having done light. So there you have it. That is Mr. Freeze. There he is with his backpack again. I believe that covers everything about him other than just some paint which again that kind of falls on you guys and you can paint him however you want. I did add some details in so I filled in the black on his arms on both sides here and I did the silver on his hands and on his controls there on the sides. And there's more silver around the neck here and on on that kind of ring around the dome. But other than that, I just thought, you know, it's, it's Mr. Freeze. He's already kind of gray and black and white. I didn't really want to do the purple version or the blue stuff too much other than just the lights on there that power his suit. So I think it worked out really well. There you have it. There is Mr. Freeze. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Keep checking back on Thursdays. I know Toast has a few he's working on and I've got a bunch this whole shelf behind me here. So let me tell you there is no shortage of customs coming in the near future. Like and subscribe, hit that notification button so that you can see when we have more customs to show you guys. And stay tuned. Until next time, I am Dan. This has been Void City Customs, part of the Void City Reviews channel. See you next time.